Hey there, I'm Tim. Today, I want to talk to you about how you can get a bit more oomst out of your car audio system using a dual voice coil subwoofer. This is Learn TV. So the subwoofer in your car works in a similar way to most other speakers. It receives an electrical current from your amplifier and that electrical current is transferred through the speaker terminals to what's called the voice coil. A voice coil in a speaker is wire that is tightly wound around behind the driver unit. And what happens when you apply an electrical current to that coil of wire is it creates a magnetic field. That magnetic field pushes against a fixed magnet which sits in the bottom of the speaker and in doing so forces the driver forward. The process of pushing that driver forward shifts the air and it's that shifting of the air that is what actually creates the sound. If you want to know a little bit more about how sound is created, check out the other Learn TV clip on noise cancelling which covers off some of that in a bit more detail. Pretty well all speakers have to have a voice coil in order for them to work in this way. And so what is unique about these speakers is that they have what's called a dual voice coil. And a dual voice coil essentially means that you have two of those rounds of wire wrapped in around behind the speaker. Now the main benefit of that is it gives you a great deal more flexibility in the way you can actually wire these subwoofers. And it's particularly relevant because a subwoofer, since it is using so much energy to drive such a large speaker, requires some additional flexibility in order to help you make the most of your amplifier and in particular the car audio system that you've got. We're only going to cover this at a very basic level today because car audio can start to get very very complicated. However, keep watching Learn TV episodes and we'll cover it in a little bit more detail as we go on. There are three main ways that you can go about installing a dual voice coil subwoofer. The first is just to wire up the two coils independently. And the way you would do this, for example, is you might use a single amplifier with exactly the same signal running out of two independent channels on the amplifier. The benefit of this is if you've got an amplifier that is not capable of being bridged, you can still get maximum power out of the two channel amplifier into your dual voice coil subwoofer. We're going to talk a little bit more about bridging on a later Learn TV episode. The second, and probably the most popular way of using dual voice coil subwoofers, is to run them in parallel. Now by running them in parallel, what you do is you present the amplifier with a lower impedance. That's the little ohm rating that you see on some amplifiers. And what you'll notice is on most car audio amplifiers, as you reduce that ohm rating from, for example, 4 ohms to 2 ohms, the power actually goes up. The concept of impedance in a car audio circuit is very similar to that of resistance in, for example, your home wiring. So, by reducing the impedance, you can actually get more efficiency out of the amplifier and therefore more power. Now this is great because amplifiers and subwoofers are actually best matched when the amplifier is producing a little bit more power than the subwoofer is on paper capable of handling. That's where you're going to get your best efficiency. You do however need to be a little bit careful because not all amplifiers are designed to be run at lower impedances. In most car audio circuits they run along pretty happily at around about 4 ohms. If you've got an amplifier that is capable of being run at 2 ohms it will clearly state it. And certainly it's worth being careful because most amplifiers until you get into higher end more specialised devices are not capable of running reliably below 2 ohms. So just to go back to this particular subwoofer, this subwoofer has got two 4 ohm voice coils. By running them in parallel, it's essentially the same as running two 4 ohm speakers. And that means that if they run in parallel, it presents the amplifier with a 2 ohm load. So therefore, you get better efficiency out of the amplifier. The other option for a dual voice coil subwoofer is using a series circuit. 
Now, a series circuit, unlike the parallel circuit that we've talked about, actually ends up presenting the amplifier with a higher impedance. So in this case, your 4 ohm plus 4 ohm voice coils on this subwoofer, if run in series, will actually present the amplifier with an 8 ohm load. Now, given what I just said about parallel circuits offering the best efficiency, you'd wonder why somebody would do that. But there's a number of good reasons for it. The first is, by running at a higher impedance, because of the nature of this electrical circuit, you actually end up with better sound quality. Now, that's not such a big deal when you're dealing with a subwoofer, because distortion in very low frequencies is not as audible to us as it is, for example, in mid-range or treble frequencies. However, it is still relevant. The other more important benefit of running in series is that it would allow you to connect up additional subwoofers on the same channel. So for example, if you have an amplifier that is capable of running at 4 ohms quite happily, you could run series through this dual voice coil subwoofer and then run a second dual voice coil subwoofer also in series, both of them running at 8 ohms but have the overall circuit running in parallel. So you take your two 8 ohm subwoofers and they present themselves as 4 ohms to your amplifier. So as you can see, running dual voice coil subwoofers gives you a great deal more flexibility in the kind of systems that you can run in your car. We have, however, today only covered this at a pretty basic level. So we'll be covering it in a bit more detail in future Learn TV episodes when we talk a little bit more about amplifiers and matching your subs and your speakers to your amplifiers. For now, though, I hope you've enjoyed this look at dual voice coil subwoofers. We'll see you next time on Learn TV.